Welcome back to Flick Connection, where I'm going to tell you about all the best movies and shows getting added to Netflix in October 2023. This list is going to include a bunch of new original content, including movies and shows, as well as everything leaving in the month of October, so you can be sure to catch those titles before they leave. This video is sponsored by Fume, and I'll tell you more about them later in the video, but right now let's talk about all the best stuff getting added on October 1st, which is where they add a lot of things you're already familiar with. Movies like the new Dune remake. The sequel actually got pushed back several months because of the writer's strike, but because of the strike, it looks like these streaming services are picking up tons of big movies since they're not releasing a lot of brand new content. Dune being one of the bigger, better movies of the month, but there's a lot more movies like Elysium coming back to Netflix, which would honestly make a killer double feature with Dune. Are you not entertained? They've also got a pretty killer Russell Crowe double feature with Gladiator and A Beautiful Mind, two top-notch movies coming to the platform again on the first. Another double feature would be Jordan Peele's first two movies with Get Out and Us. While I did like Us and thought it had some killer moments in it, the story of Get Out is glued together so well. All the themes jive. I absolutely love that one. It makes for a great Halloween watch. Ma, starring Octavia Spencer, would make a pretty cool Halloween watch. This is a weird one, but fans of her definitely need to check out her weird character she plays in it. And people who love unusual horror movies should get a kick out of this one as well. Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. That's us. Stallworth Brothers. We're on a roll, baby. They're also adding Spike Lee's Black Klansman, which was actually the first big movie to star John David Washington, and I loved his character in this movie. Adam Driver plays a really good character in this as well. A highly underrated movie starring Russell Crowe is Cinderella Man. This is the story of Jim Braddock, a boxer who managed to not just take care of his family during the Great Depression, but to mount a pretty serious comeback as well. It too is top-notch stuff. Catch Me If You Can comes back to Netflix, and as much as I love that movie, it seems to be on and off in Netflix every six months or so, but they're also bringing back Columbiana, starring Zoe Saldana, and this is a really badass PG-13 action movie. In fact, I've re-watched it in recent years, and it is surprisingly violent for a PG-13 action flick, and she is just absolutely killer in it, another one that is highly underrated. Keeping it going with the underrated action theme, we've got American Maid coming to Netflix for the first time. Oh. That's for the damage. For your sister. Hey, little darling. And your bike. You never saw me. This is based on the true story of Barry Seal, a man who helped work with the CIA to run drugs and guns into the country. It is a wild story, and you see a lot of crazy, true moments brought to life with a top-notch production. This, too, is one of my top recommendations for the month. But there's a lot more Tom Cruise coming to Netflix this month, including the first four Mission Impossible movies. All excellent, all in their own way. They've all got kind of their own vibe and flavor. The fourth, Ghost Protocol, being my favorite out of maybe the entire series. But if you still don't get enough of Tom Cruise running in all those movies, they're also adding The Firm, the first movie where he was seen sprinting on screen. This too is a 90s thriller that holds up surprisingly well. It's based on the writing of John Grisham. If you haven't seen it for a while, The Firm is glued together real well. And he's also running in what I consider to be one of Steven Spielberg's more underrated movies, War of the Worlds. I feel like critics kind of panned this when it was released, and I thought it was a great return to monster movies for him. I thought it had a lot of great moments, similar to moments in Jurassic Park and Jaws. And while the movie on the whole isn't the same caliber as those, it does have a lot of moments in it that come pretty damn close. Now I want you to keep in mind we're still just talking about everything getting added on the first, but I want to keep this train moving with another excellent action movie, The Adventures of Tintin. Now this was actually directed by Steven Spielberg and co-produced by Peter Jackson, and it is filled with superb action. Obviously it's a family-friendly movie, but it's one of the most action-packed family-friendly movies you could watch, especially on Netflix this month. 
They're also adding Saving Private Ryan, also directed by Steven Spielberg. This would make a great pairing with Band of Brothers, which was added to Netflix just a couple of weeks ago. For rom-com lovers, they're adding quite a bit, including My Best Friend's Wedding and Runaway Bride, both starring Julia Roberts. And then sort of the cult classic rom-com, Love Actually, which I don't imagine a ton of people will be watching in October, but there's a good chance it'll be hanging around through Christmas, which is the season. All the ladies love watching that one. They're also going to be adding American Beauty, Identity Thief, Pompeii, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, and The Monuments Men. Again, all available on October 1st. Now, if you can't tell, I'm definitely a movie addict. It's certainly one of my vices, but some of y'all, you've got some bad habits that need breaking, and that's where today's sponsor, Fume, comes in. This little device right here might help you break your bad habit, and that's because Fume looks at bad habits in a different way. Not every part of a bad habit is bad, so Fume recommends just removing the bad from your habit. But this little device is super cool. It's magnetically connected. There is a little flavor core right in there. This one happens to be sparkling grapefruit. And what's great about Fume is you're not inhaling anything except flavored air. The sparkling grapefruit is delicious. There's way more flavor coming out of one of these things than you would expect. There's nothing electronic in this. There's no vapor and there's no harmful chemicals. Everything in their flavor is completely natural. I actually do have a bad habit of fidgeting with my beard and they actually engineered several little things that are fidgety with the Fume that just kind of help me keep my hands busy and I don't touch my beard as much. Fume has already served over 100,000 customers with thousands of success stories. There's no reason that can't be you. Why not try to break up from your destructive habits today by picking up the journey pack? You can go to tryfume.com or just use this QR code right here, but don't forget to use my code FLICKCONNECTION to get 10% off your order. Again, that's tryfume.com. Don't forget to use my code FLICKCONNECTION to save 10% off your first order. It's a great deal, but speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies getting added to Netflix this month. On October 4th, they're adding a limited series all about David Beckham and his career. It's just titled Beckham, but it looks like they go way in depth. So anyone who is remotely a fan of his, this is going to be a must watch for you. Race to the Summit is going to be a German documentary. They may have a decent dubbed version, but it's about a couple of climbers who actually got into speed climbing and started racing up the world's tallest peaks. If you've been remotely interested in any of the climbing documentaries coming out over the last several years, this one looks like it's going to be right up there with the rest of them. We're deceiving the most powerful tech company in the world. Apple should shut you down. Once we start, we won't stop. We are disruptors, because that is what revolution requires. And then Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber actually comes to Netflix. This is a Showtime original series that did get renewed. Season two is yet to release. It will focus on Facebook, but season one focuses on Uber and stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Uma Thurman, and Kyle Chandler. Elizabeth Shue even has a small role in this. It's got great reviews on IMDb. I have yet to see it, but you're likely to see more activity like this on Netflix with the writer strike going on. Hopefully they do continue to bring in some really good shows from other networks. On October 5th, they're gonna be bringing back the French heist series, Lupin, for season three. This is actually a really clever, cool, slick heist series. It feels derivative from heist stuff in all kind of the best ways possible and also clever and fresh at the same time. Now I'm actually behind on the season. I've got some catching up to do, but I can tell you, if you just watched the first episode and you're not into it by then, then maybe the show's not for you. But it is a series that starts off with a bang and obviously it's French language, but if you don't do subtitles, they do have a very good dubbed version of the show. Siri. How do you perform CPR on a dog? Also on the fifth, they're gonna add Sex Tape, starring Jason Segel and Cameron Diaz. Not the funniest sex comedy ever, but a decent one, especially if you're in the mood for an adult-centered romantic comedy one night, this would be a good one. On the sixth, they're adding a new action movie from South Korea that looks like it could be pretty solid. It's just titled Ballerina. And it looks like a bloodbath of an action movie. And the main character in the movie is played by Young Young Seo, who was also one of the leads in Burning. 
an incredible South Korean drama that I have recommended very strongly on the channel before. She's amazing in that movie, so I'm very curious to see what she does in a bloody action movie. And then Fair Play is a brand new Netflix original that looks really interesting and intense. It's actually about a young couple who fall in love, get engaged, they work for the same company, and when one of them is offered a promotion over the other, it starts to tear them apart. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not that interested in the synopsis, but the trailer looks absolutely dynamite, and it really does look like it gets quite intense. This is definitely one I'll be watching shortly after it releases. October 11th brings a limited docu-series titled Big Vape, The Rise and Fall of Jewel. Now, while this documentary seems to focus on the dangers of vaping, they also seem to focus heavily on how the tech company Juul became so popular, what their strategies were, and ultimately what the consequences of that marketing strategy was. Sounds like interesting stuff to me. But for something even scarier than that, on the 11th, they're also adding It Follows, one of my favorite horror movies of the 21st century so far. It harkens back to horror movies of the 80s really well, while still being full of a lot of new, fresh ideas. It's got a killer original score, and just a creepy idea at its core that will just keep you thinking if you let it. But then on Thursday, October 12th, we can start prepping for Halloween because Netflix is releasing Mike Flanagan's final horror series on the platform, The Fall of the House of Usher. And yes, this series is based on Edgar Allan Poe. I have been a big fan of Mike Flanagan's work all the way back from his early days doing movies like Absentia. So I will definitely be checking this one out. And just by the trailer alone, it looks like it could be one of the best he's done so far. Personally, I loved Midnight Mass. I thought it was incredible. So I'm very interested to see what happens with this final series he's doing. But if you want something that's probably even more intense, they're gonna be adding Deliver Us From Evil on the same day. This is a dark horror movie starring Eric Bana. While this is not a masterpiece, it is a pretty cool Halloween flick. Eric Bana plays a New York City cop who, after investigating several grisly murders, teams up with an exorcist. Sean Harris actually plays one of the villains in this movie, and he is just one of the best villain actors I think I've ever seen on screen. And while the movie barely surpasses mediocrity, it does have some pretty fantastic elements to it, making it a solid watch for Halloween this month. But on Friday the 13th, they're releasing a new Swedish horror movie titled The Conference that looks like it might actually have a little bit of levity to it. As you can see, the killer in this movie is wearing this ridiculous mask, and it does look like it's dark and probably has some scares in it. But I'm particularly interested in this one because they decided to release it on Friday the 13th. It's not like we get Friday the 13th every single year during Halloween time, but We've got one this year, and hopefully this movie is worthy of a Friday the 13th release. But if you end up watching too much horror in the month of October and you need a little light break, they're also adding Long Shot, which is only a few years old now, but this actually stars Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron. In this movie, she's actually running for the presidency. He plays a journalist who ends up becoming her speechwriter. So you do get a little bit of an inside look at how journalists and politicians rub elbows, but ultimately this is just kind of a romantic comedy, or at least it ends up heading in that direction. And it's nice and sweet. And as far as kind of rom-coms go, this is one of the better ones I've seen in recent years. If you like getting Netflix recommendations like this, why not let the algorithm know by clicking that like button, maybe even clicking the subscribe button, that way you at least have a chance of seeing my content in the future. You're not the first detective to discover this body. And then the 19th brings one of the more interesting series I've seen on Netflix in recent months. It's titled Bodies. This revolves around four different detectives in four different timelines discovering the exact same body in an alley. I don't know that there's much time travel elements in the show, but the different timelines are definitely gonna deliver a time travel type of a thing. So again, this one's just got me locked in for the 19th. And then I don't talk about anime shows very often, even though Netflix adds several every single month. But this month, 
they're adding Captain Laserhawk, which looks pretty interesting because it's actually a combination of anime and Ubisoft video game characters, which I've loved several of the games referenced in the show, so this is one I'll at least preview. But then on the 20th, one of my favorite comedians of all time has a brand new movie coming out that he wrote, directed, and stars in, Bill Burr in Old Dads. Just rub some dirt on him. You might want to put a little Neosporin on it. I think you get infected. Oh, yeah? Hey, well, listen, I'm trying to raise a little man here, not a fucking pussy. So why don't you just go on Twitter and go share this story where you're the hero? And this is loosely based on his real life. I believe he became a dad around age 50. And the movie focuses on guys in their late 40s, early 50s who have very young kids. I mean, Bill Burr's 55, so there's a lot of commentary on, you know, the younger generation from what I've seen in the trailer. Definitely something I will be watching. And Bill Burr is a fantastic actor. For example, he was in The King of Staten Island, which I did not like at all, but I loved his role in it, so I'll be interested to see what he brings to screen here. Also on the 20th, Big Mouth comes back for its final season on Netflix. The 25th adds a new nature docu-series titled Life on Our Planet, but it's not really nature photography. This is about animals that have gone extinct and what life was like for them on planet Earth. Kind of a mix between the prehistoric show on Apple TV and all of the planet Earth stuff on Netflix. And then another big Netflix original release comes out on the 27th. It's titled Pain Hustlers. It stars Emily Blunt, Chris Evans, and Andy Garcia. And this is from director David Yates, who actually did the bulk of the Harry Potter movies. And while this will be nothing like Harry Potter, he's a solid director, and this should be a pretty solid movie. In this movie, she plays a woman who helps grow a bankrupt pharmacy. Looks like it's actually going to have a lot in common with Painkiller on Netflix. So if you were into that show, this Pain Hustler should dovetail with it perfectly. Also on the 27th, they're adding a new horror movie from Spain titled Sister Death, which is actually a prequel to Veronica, another horror movie I have highly recommended here on the channel. I thought Veronica was a very effective, creep out kind of a movie, but horror sequels can be hit and miss, so we'll just have to wait and see. But here is everything leaving in the month of October. If you're new to the channel, welcome. But the date listed is the date that it leaves, which means you can't watch it on that date. You need to watch it sooner. I put some titles in bold. They're things I've strongly recommended in the past. But that is the list. You can find the full list always in the top pinned comment down below. Thanks again to Fume for sponsoring this video. Go check out their link in the video description. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special October Netflix episode. And you will see me on the next one.